Welcome to Gray Overload. I'm Anthony, and Intel is exiting the Nook business, and that's sad to, to me. I don't own a Nook, but I found them very interesting computers. I've recommended them many times to people, and I, you know, to put them in small places, to have a little form factor, people use them for all sorts of stuff, and it is sad to see them uh, get out of it and, ha and get rid of this line. I, I hope that all the other companies that have now come up in this space keep evolving it because they're, they're doing a really good job here. But this is, I think this is another thing of Intel, you know, in the economic side that we're in, of Intel looking at what they can keep, what they can't keep, and how to progress forward because there is a lot of different stuff coming up out all this time. So let's take a look at uh, Serve the Home here because that's where I saw this today. Um, yeah, so they're saying Intel is exiting. And let's scroll down to the bottom because he, he went through, Patrick went through, did a really great job and uh, talked about everything that they've done with the Nook and they got a reply from Intel which is we have decided to stop investing in the next unit of compute business for a pivot and pivot our strategy to enable ecosystem partners to continue the nook innovation and growth the decision will not impact the remaining of intel's client and computing group ccg or the network and edge computing nex business furthermore we are working with our partners and customers to ensure a smooth transition and fulfillment of all current commitments including ongoing support to nook, nook products uh, currently in the market so that is a good thing it looks like they're still working with the partners to kind of get that out and uh the you know these were really really nice little machines you needed a little box to run something uh to set it up, you plug it in, it's a small form factor. You could do, they had VESA mount, you could just mount to the VESA, really small, really nice, uh, sleek design. You put them in uh, certain places. Let's say you, you, you run, want to run a point of sale system and you needed a computer to run it. These are really nice for that. You didn't have a, uh, need a bigger machine. But it is sad to see them go here. And I'll post this link down in the description below if you want to go through it. And uh, there, but that was Intel strategy. So another thing that Intel has kind of adjusted on, you know, I, you know, one of the things that I was looking at here over the past years is Intel, you know, acquired a tailor and they had all this other accumulated debt overall. And that was on their balance sheet a lot, if you look at their financials. So that was just something to keep in mind. And as the market here has gotten a little bit tighter, and I'm sure Intel is trying to pivot and clean up messes that have happened over the years with their new CEO and make sure that their businesses are profitable and they're putting the resources into areas that are going to bring a lot more fruit going forward. You look at where AI is right and that's a big big thing right now where is intel in that it seems like they're gone right it doesn't seem like they're at the forefront there and this is where i think intel is just if you look at the overall business we have to make sure that we're getting our engineers our you know design and everything in the right areas so that we can be you know going towards the same goals and competing in the same markets that their competitors are in because they don't want to be left behind. I think that's a, you know, a smart thing to look at. It's sad if anyone gets laid off. I, you know, that's a, that's not a fun thing at all. But this is one of those things where Intel is trying to adjust. I feel like and trying to get into certain areas. I, you know, as much as I like the Nook and <laughs> that whole line of products, I think that you know, as long as they're partners, as long as they're still, you know. PC manufacturers putting out nooks. I think this is just a, you know, move that Intel naturally had to do just to be able to make sure that they're putting the resources where, and the, you know, from people to money where it needs to go to try to keep competing on and not make it harder on themselves in the future. So that's my thoughts on all this stuff. 
I want to know what you guys are all thinking about the Nook business. How much have you used the Nook? I know people use them for everything from Plex servers to back of, you know, just little desktop computers. I know some people that run them as their desktop. And so they're not, they're not so much cheap, but they're for what they are, they're pretty powerful. They can do whatever you need them to for the most part. You know, you're not going to buy one of these to game on it. Of course, they did have uh, <laughs> some of them that were trying to do that. But I think that these are all, you know, this line kind of ushered in the new, um, hey, let's get a small form factor desktop. And I think really small. And you see a lot of these ITX cases, even though you have components that have to fit in there, so they can't be super small. But you have these, comp you know, ITX cases that are really trying to drop down to size and still have as much compute as you possibly can in there. And I think part of that was this whole Nook lineup of, see, look how small we can get a desktop computer. Let's build them smaller, you know, with the parts that you can. How do we design a case? And I think that really kind of, you know, pushed that, helped push the ITX movement a lot more because I'm a huge fan of that too, you know. I, I probably won't do it for my main desktop, but I have thought about building a small ITX um, just to see what it's capable of and how small I can get it. But we'll see um, so yeah that's you know the sa sad part about this is Intel's exiting that business but I think that this might actually help if they put the resources R&D into other areas the money in other areas let's say the PC business or their CPU side Altera right their FPGAs their uh, their GPU side if they're going to AXG right if they keep doing uh, graphics, you start putting in those areas and you can start developing a chip that is, you know, more AI oriented. And I know that they have chips coming out now that are what they were going to be. Uh, they said AI, uh, AI um, instructions. So that's a good thing, but how well does it perform compared to H100? And then you have AMD coming out with it. So you already get NVIDIA in the market, and that's where you're kind of competing to. I think that Intel is just saying, I have an instruction set that it's able to compute on, not so much of, hey, we're able to beat, you know, H100. And that, that's where kind of these resources probably need to go, is to get on track there, you know, making sure fabs are sitting, you know, and looking good here going forward, all this other stuff. So this is just some of the things I was thinking about here as they transition, you know, it is sad to see the Nook as it was kind of a, you know, leap into an area that everyone kind of jumped out on and they had some really cool stuff there out of this division. But uh, as the economic times have changed, you kind of got to go through and uh, change things. Otherwise, it's going to make it even harder on the company going forward. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you've owned a Nook. Well, let me know what you use the Nook for as well. I'm interested in all that. And until next time, I want to say thank you all for watching. Thank you for taking the time to uh, support Graverload and helping this channel grow. Like, subscribing, sharing the video. It always does really help the channel and I really do appreciate it. And until next time, God bless.